So on this first pre presentation, what we see is the fibroblast and epithelium interacting with lung injury leading to some kind of process. And we are expecting to see a certain amount of cell death or reprogramming at the capillary and epithelial level. As we move to the next stage, the results of that lung injury lead to an inflammatory process. And that inflammatory process is immune mediated with immune activation and polarization of macrophages that get drawn into the alveolar space. Those macrophages then provide uh, the cytokines and interleukins, if you will, that lead to a vascular leak and extravascular coagulation. And finally, a fibrinous clot, which is meant to seal off the area of injury in a normal process. We then see that there's a recruitment of various cell lines to help that repair process, including fibroblast recruitment and invasion and proliferation and persistence of those cells. In fact, one of the major thoughts in regards to pulmonary fibrosis is that the fibroblast cell line becomes immortalized while the epithelial cells unfortunately die. The next build on that is activation of those fibroblasts and differentiation into a myofibroblast, which is a more universal cell with greater pleiotrophic activity that helps mediate that process. The fibroblasts in the differentiating to that process creates whirls of cells called fibroblastic foci, which seem to drive the fibrosis forward. They then lay down the extracellular matrix, which is really the fibrotic component or the building blocks involved in that fibrotic component. And that matrix leads to cross-linking and accumulation, creating that fibrosis. And then finally, we see alveolar collapse and <clears throat> re-epithelialization of that region. As it gets sticky, if you will, and the fibrosis shrinks down like any scar that you would have on the back of your hand, it causes restriction uh, and a stiffness in the lung. And this is just one of the outlying um, possible mechanisms that's been proposed to help put the context of the disease into place. So on this, on this last portion of the build slide, what we see is an integration of really two parts. Uh, the first is uh, showing some of the mechanisms involved in their interaction with various interventions. And those might include things like N-acetylcysteine, uh, levocremazumab, nintenidib and profinidone, uh, and uh, other uh, monoclonal antibodies acting at the various portions. And what that's showing you is that the particular agents in development are really starting to focus in in a far more targeted fashion at where the mechanisms of action may be occurring. So directed monoclonal activity at the immune activation, uh, less directed activity involving nintenidib and profinidone, at fibroblast recruitment, and certainly at fibroblast activation. And then finally, directed monoclonal activity at the accumulation and cross-linking of the alveolar matrix. The last part is really integrating the underlying genetics. We know that there's a clear predilection in these patients involving certain uh, predispositions of common polymorphisms and uncommon polymorphisms the largest group being the MUC5B polymorphism, which represents about 35% of the patients. Now, this is not an abnormal polymorphism. It's very important to recognize that. It exists in 10% of the populace and 35% of the patients. And so 10% of the populace is certainly not abnormal. It's just a minority of them. And we know that by risk stratifying for these things, that we can try to begin to understand where the effects may be in this hypothesis over the possible mechanisms involved in initiating pulmonary fibrosis.